So hello, uh, my name is Fyodor Gerbak and um, I was asked to uh, give you some presentations, um, a presentation about doing presentation here at ESO. So first about this talk, um, I used to be extremely afraid of speaking in public. Uh, I'm not joking. And, but because I had to speak, I spent a bit of time thinking about it, so today I'll share with you some of my reflections. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, every decent talk should be a compliment of slides, it's not probably not. And um, the thing is, so when you um, you design anything, you should have some rules. So, first of all, the text should be large enough, so never use more, less than 12 points for your text. Or, and don't put more than six level bullets, it's a very known uh, rule. But it, most of all, you know, you know, make your make your presentation unique. So really design it, um, the template. So I just boil it down into four steps for you. So just to quickly do it. So first of all, first step is to align the text to the left and to put the logo to the right. This is actually important because um, the presentation is. <laughs> Slide is your chance for branding. So you should always put the logo. It should be it should be there. We should see it, uh, but should never be in the in the forefront of the attention. So that's why you put it on the right hand side, because if you put it on the left hand side, this is the first thing you look at. But looking at the right hand side, that's better because it's there, but it's not uh, in the way. So and then the second step is to uh, make the whole thing you know fit together. So you should choose the colors correctly. The third step is to delimit the zone so that we know where each thing are, so the title from the rest of the body. And this is actually important, and this is a thing that most people forget. Um, you should have a nice footer here. Um, typically, you should put your name, so just in case people forgot who you are. Um, the slide number, you should put the slide number here, because like this we can follow the progress. Don't put the over. <laughs> presentation is not really called presenting at ESO, but it's actually called storytelling at ESO. So the idea here is we don't really care about what you have on the slides. Because, look, we paid the travel, we paid the hotel, maybe we're happy with the food, maybe you're not happy with the food, and we spend one week here, but if you really just, all we, have, all we are required to do is read your slides, we were better off just staying at home and reading it from your website, you know? It would have been much easier. So don't focus on the slide. Focus on whatever you have to say. And the cool thing here is that because we have so many people, it already shows the interest that people, that all these people have to actually hear you speaking. So whenever you have, you know, when you are here, tell us what is inside you. Tell us what matters to you. Because actually, yeah, that's what we are here for. So whenever you design a story, um, actually, stories, that they don't just come. You have to design them. You have to think a bit about them. And whenever you design a story, the first thing you do, you think of the audience. Now, that's a good thing, actually. Actually, it's a good thing and a bad thing. So, again, how many of you have ever been to ESA before? Okay. How many are you here for the first time? Okay, now, that's a good thing and there's a bad thing. The good thing here is that half of the audience uh, is new. Um, so. This is good and bad. So the good thing here is um, we have new participants. The bad thing here is you don't know these participants, right? So you have to think about them. Whenever you sell a story, think of who the audience is. What do they want? Uh, who are here new to small talk? Now that's good news. So just like four of them uh, are new to small talk. So you see, people here, they already know, they already, they already here, they know your language, they know what you're talking about, 
So that's actually a good, that's not that bad of a thing. So most conferences you go there and you have no idea what this, uh, what the audience is about. But here you already have at least half of the people here know, you know exactly what they are because you've been here before. So, okay, now you know your audience and then the next thing you do, you choose the message. Now when I say choose the message, I don't just say choose a message. But I really want to focus on just one thing, choose one message. And I cannot stress this well enough, choose one message, not two, not one and a half, one. And now, I tell you why. You know, you have a 30 seconds advertising on TV and it has one punchline. And they say, yeah, okay, but they cannot cram more than one punchline in 30 seconds. But I did a PhD and after like three years, I got to defend one sentence after three years. And I wrote 200 page document to say, to say that that's an okay statement. One statement. And now if that's not good enough, so who here has been to ESAC before? <laughs> okay, now I just have one challenge for you, but you don't have to say it in public. But remember how many, first of all, how many talks do you remember the titles of the talks? Or the even topics of the talks from last year do you remember? That's one. And then choose the one that you think that was the most, the best one. And think how many messages do you remember from that talk. And if you got, let's say there were like 20 talks last year, if you remember five of them, that's already great. And if you, from all those five, you remember one full statement, that was the best talk. Okay? So now imagine, you have to give here a talk. There were like 20 talks. And people next year will remember one talk. And out of that one talk, they will remember one statement. So you see, don't try to put two statements in there, because if you already put one statement in the head of the audience, you're the winner. So really, I can't really stress this one enough. Choose one message. No matter whether you have 15 minutes or one hour, one message. So the, my message here is to tell you to tell a story and don't look at the slides. Now, but of course, again, there is no way you give a talk these days without slides. Okay? By the way, anybody here has uh, an idea of how slides used to be called? Transparency. Foils, right? You can see that how technical people you are. You know, you're all describing technicalities. These are solutions. But there used to be, like a long time ago, when people were thinking of the problem, they were calling them visual aids. And that's a problem. Slides denotes a solution. But you see, we got so entangled into solving this technical problem of how do we actually put those things there, that we forgot about the problem. <laughs> the problem is visual aids. That is, you want to augment whatever you're saying with something that is there visually. Now actually there are two things here. One of them is visual. Okay? Slides are visual. Now let me give you an example. Suppose you go on the street and you, you see this thing. I'll read it to you. So you are driving car and say, oh, important sign. If this sign was put here by the authorities in charge. If this sign stop looking around and proceed to know the car is coming your way. Important, the car is coming from the other direction, you don't have to stop. The sign concerns vehicles only, pedestrians should look at the signs dedicated to them. This sign should not be touched or hindered in any way. Any violation is punishable according to the law. Now what do you do? <laughs> right? You have 10 seconds to choose. What do you do? Right? You don't know. But if I put this sign on, on there, you know exactly what you have to do. Now do I know that I, I, I mean, I, there is nothing in there to tell me well, the other cars will not have to stop, and no, no, no. I already know this. It's good enough. And the nice thing about it is it's good enough because it has like three major qualities. First of all, it's big so that anyone can see it. Second of all, it's red so that we can identify it as being dangerous. And third of all, it's so simple that you don't need to go to school to understand it. So the difference between these two is that this one is deep dead, but this one is effective. Okay, now visual aids, usually they are there for like 30 seconds. Now which one do you go? You go that way or you go that way? Now you choose. But I'm telling you that not all details are important. In fact, only few details are important. Now, I like to tell a story about this. Um, 
it goes like this. So there was a young Indian, and then he wanted to start a, um, a fish store. So he decided, okay, I want to start a fish store. He was really young and enthusiastic, and he wanted to go to the fish market and open a fish store there. And then he did, and then he put a sign there and he said, we sell fresh fish here. And that was nice. And then the second day, and he was really happy, and the second day, the father comes, you know, we is not really needed because it's obvious that it's you. So I then said, yeah, you actually, you were right. So the second, the, the third day, then he removed the we. Next day, the, sister, the brother comes and then says, you know, here is obviously, I'm already here, so there's no way you can say, there's no need to say here. <coughs> so then he removed here as well. Then the sister comes and say, well, it's clear that the fish is actually sold, so you're going to have to tell me because it's clear that it's a, it's a, it's a shock. And indeed, yes. So there is no need for saying sold as either. So he got the fresh fish, and I said, oh, that should be good enough. But then the neighbor comes and say, well, you see, everybody can see that the fresh, the, uh, the fish is actually fresh. And then they say, well, okay. So then he removed fresh uh, also. <laughs> So then he said, uh, well, the guy himself said, but you know, everybody can smell that this is fish. So basically, I don't even have to say it's fish, and I already have a logo there. So he removed it completely. <coughs> now, this is the process you go. You take what you think is absolutely necessary, you remove 50% of it, and then you still have 50% too much. <laughs> okay, that's, that's what you should always know. There is no, almost, you can't go wrong there. Now, actually, I think this is a bit too, um, too stripped out. So I still think you need to say that fresh is needed, the fresh there. So my final design would, be, would look like this. But in the end, what I want to say is that it's very, very difficult to actually strip too much details uh, apart. And it's more important to think one point. You know, you make a bullet point that is this big, and you put it there, and you just have one point. Now, if you weren't, you know, too obsessed with object-oriented, I would tell you this is about encapsulation. Okay? So think of slides as encapsulating one point. And after you encapsulate one point in the slide, what happens is the following thing. You have actually this one point, but then you have several of these points. And if you step outside, you know, you go into slide sorter in, on PowerPoint or whatever table view, light table in the keynote, then you will see your points. And then the whole story is in there, in between. So my rule of thumb is that if I can't see my points when looking at the whole thing, it means I probably put too many things and I definitely use a too small of a font. By the way, I mean, I'm not very disciplined, so my templates usually have like 64 points um, fonts, right? Not 12, 64. Like this, I'm sure I can't put more than two sentences on that slide. I can't, there's no way. Okay. So as I said, slides are visual aids, right? We said two things, but there are two components there. They are also aids. But there used to be a time when talks were given like this. <coughs> It was just one guy with something in his head and an audience willing to listen. Okay? 
And actually, we all, we know everybody, all the speakers that are here, that are coming here, they have a lot of stuff in their head. And we want to hear that. And just don't let the slides uh, stay in your way. By the way, when was the last time you ever projected an empty slide? Okay, this is how it looks on white. <laughs> okay? So no matter what you do, you know, don't, this is technology. Slides are technologies. So no matter what you do, if you want to tell a story, relax. It's normal to be nervous. I'm nervous. I'm horribly nervous every time I come and speak here. And I'm even more nervous now that I have to do a reflective presentation, right? And everybody here knows how tricky it is to play with reflection. <laughs> so no matter what you do, just relax. Tell us what is important to you. And all these things, just leave them aside. You know, if they stay in your way, just come here and connect to the audience. Connect to us. This is what we're here for. We're not here to read your slides. And then the way to do it, the way to connect, don't hide here, don't stay here, stay here. And the way to do that is using this nice remote control. Okay? If you don't have one, come and ask me for one. And I def no, I'm not joking, come and ask me for one. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, I have this book with me. This is the book from Gary Reynolds, it's there. If you want to take a look at it, it's very light read. You can just skim through it quickly. If you want to take a look at it in breaks, you can just come and ask me for it. Um, I also recommend strongly www.presentationsn.com. That's a very nice blog. So basically, this is what I wanted to tell you. I want to tell you that presenting is storytelling, and you should not forget that when you design your talk. So thank you very much. <laughs>